today's science fiction is tomorrow's science fact. It's a common observation that science fiction and fantasy writers have to dream up worlds more incredible than this one. They have to keep things larger than life, a step ahead of reality. Writers can dream up huge cities, worlds, and even universes filled with amazing characters, thrilling events, and new technologies. There really is no limit to their creativity. They don't have to explain how something works, just that it does. Now, speaking as an engineer, I wish technological invention was that simple, but it's not. But what if we could take some of those ideas written in fiction and make them work in real life? If you're a speculative film writer or a fiction writer, I'm trying to make your work harder because what I do, while sometimes impractical, is turn fiction into reality. About a year ago, I quit my job as a product developer to focus on these zany inventions and my YouTube channel full time. It's called The Hacksmith, and we have a series called Make It Real. We take fictional ideas from comics, movies, and video games and make real working prototypes. And if you couldn't tell from the intro, comics are some of my favorites. But before I get into that, I'd like to speak briefly about Arthur C. Clarke, a British science fiction author. If you're not familiar, he's the guy behind 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, Arthur C. Clarke formulated three prediction based adages known as Clarke's Three Laws. The first law states, when a distinguished but elderly scientist states that something is possible, he is almost certainly right. But when he states that something is impossible, he is very probably wrong. This suggests that as technology advances, things that were impossible became possible. We all know this. How many technologies did we think were impossible only to become possible years later? To sum it up, never write something off as impossible just because the tech might not be here yet. The second law states that the only way of discovering the limits of what is possible is by venturing a bit past into the impossible. And I think that's very true. Technology available to us today is just asking to be combined in new ways not thought of before. It's truly a time for innovators to thrive. And if you're like me, you might just enjoy making things to see if you can get them to work. And that's the beauty of it. You don't need a reason beyond that. Seeking venture capitalist funding or building a business might not be your goal at all. And the final law states, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I think that's very true. Imagine you were from the earliest 20th century and you fell into a coma and you woke up today and you saw all the technology around you. You'd surely think it was magic. Even if someone explained to you how, say, a television worked, you'd probably still not quite get it. Because think of all the engineering marvels that we take for granted on any given day. Television content has also seemed indistinguishable from magic as well. Beam me up might as well be abracadabra. And while a TV is only teleporting electrical signals from one place to another, how far are we from teleporting physical things or even living things? Do you really believe that te teleportation is absolutely impossible? If so, are you an elderly scientist? <laughs> how many ideas written in fiction have become reality years later? Star Trek is an excellent example of this, with many of the ideas first written in Star Trek becoming consumer electronics that we use every day. So much so, you could even call it Star Trek-nology. <laughs> now, bad puns aside, the most ubiquitous example is the communicator, or as we like to call it, the cell phone. From Starfleet command tablets to iPads. We might not have tractor beams yet, but there's actually a technology called acoustic levitation, which uses sound waves to suspend objects mid-air. And while Star Trek also invented the Bluetooth headset, 30 years later and you still look silly wearing it. <laughs> From universal translation wands to Google Translate, available on any phone or computer. Heck, I used to work at a company that made real-life holodecks. But personally, I think virtual reality headsets are going to completely revolutionize the market. Now, all those examples are genuinely useful product ideas. But what about all the other outlandish ideas dreamt up in fiction that might not have any commercial viability? That's a real shame for those of us who grew up hoping and dreaming for the things that we saw on TV and the movies and comics to be real. Well, fortunately, I and many others don't care about commercial viability. We just like making science, inve science fiction inventions for the hell of it. And funny enough, we found our home online. 
We're not concerned with people copying our ideas or trying to make a quick buck. The pursuit of these inventions is not for capital gain. It's for the pursuit of innovation, inspiration, and entertainment, pushing the envelope to see just how far we can go. We've received countless messages from youth all around the world explaining how we've inspired them to look into engineering and technology fields and STEM, and it's truly rewarded in itself with just that. Like I said before, I run my own YouTube channel, and we have a series called Make It Real. I start with Wolverine's claws for a Halloween costume, moved on to a pneumatic exoskeleton based off the movie Elysium which quickly evolved into one based off the video game Call of Duty. This one was a bit more powerful, and I even used it to pick up a Back to the Future DeLorean at a recent expo I went to. From there, we went back to the comics and made Batman's grappling hook and a compact repelling device. But we didn't stop there. We made our own bat signal, too. And some batarangs. Why not? But our most popular project so far has been our Captain America shield project. We took a replica shield and built a high-powered electromagnet bracer, which could lift over 3,000 pounds. This allowed us to throw the shield around and attract it from short distances, just like in the movie. And that's really cool, because the movie was all CGI. And finally, I'm crazy enough to strap rockets to my wrists in order to try flying like Iron Man, if only for a few seconds. And if you think I'm crazy, I'm just getting started. And there's others out there just like me. A friend of mine, Alan Pan, made a real working Mjolnir, uh, Thor's hammer. In Norse mythology, it was said only those who could possess the power of Thor could wield said hammer. So Alan took this literally and added a fingerprint scanner to the device, ensuring only he could pick it up. More importantly, a high-powered electromagnet ensures no mere mortal could lift yeah. it, as long as it's on a metal surface. And if you remember the third law, Worthy. Alan's YouTube channel is called Sufficiently Advanced. But we can't forget about the most unconventional inventor of us all, a British ex-plumber by the name of Colin Furs. Colin puts engineers to shame with his self-taught fabrication and design skills that are second to none. In fact, one of his most recent projects was building a real working hover bike. Now granted, it's not the safest hover bike ever dreamt up, but at least he's wearing his safety tie. With no engineering qualifications and no experience of flying, make something that actually leaves the ground. It's the Colin Furs Hoverbike. Now, Colin was able to build that be because he's an expert welder, master fabricator, and all-around mad genius. But what he's not is someone with any experience in aerodynamics. <laughs> and I think that's a true testament to today's technology. He was able to take a crazy idea, and he had the technology to back it up to make it a reality. In just a few short weeks, he built a vehicle capable of flight compared to the years it took the Wright brothers. Humanity has never had access to so much technology as we do today, allowing anyone to create their wildest dreams with the click of a button ordering some components online. And if that's not inspiring, I don't know what is. So what are you waiting for? Follow your most out there creative impulses. Most people in life, they're probably not going to get it. They're not going to understand how you can spend so much time working on something just to see if you can do it. These people won't help you. But for every out there idea, you'll find co-conspirators out there. They're people just like you, and they're after the same thing. A future that seems like magic. <laughs>